Hello there! In this video, we are going to check out an abandoned castle. An abandoned castle in Texas that a couple recently put their life savings into restoring. Nobody knows exactly why this castle was built. Nobody knows exactly when this castle was built. So we're gonna head down there, learn everything that we can about the history, take a tour of the place, and meet this couple that's dedicated to saving it. Let's go check it out. All right, so as most of you guys know, back in 2018, I sank pretty much every dime that I had into this place, Cerro Gordo, an abandoned mining town from the 1800s that has no running water. And back then it took some help from friends, some loans, and some luck just to pull the whole thing off. And ever since buying this place, I'll occasionally get emails from people wondering, dreaming, thinking about buying some unique property. And so in August, I got one of those emails, and it might have been the coolest email yet. It was from a guy named Ian, and Ian sent me an email thanking me for providing him inspiration to sink his entire life savings into an abandoned castle in Texas. <laughs> I always told myself, if you get the basement done, then you can go back to adventuring, then you can go back to exploring, then you should take a trip, you know, enjoy yourself a little bit, and the basement's done. We did it. You know, just about a week ago, we pulled off what was the impossible in finishing the basement up here. And just about the same time, I got an email from Ian. And this email was a little bit less excited. It was a little bit more stressed. You know, uh, things aren't going exactly according to plan. There's leaks, uh, money's running low, all things that I can resonate with very deeply. And so this week, what I wanna do is I wanna pack up. I wanna go down to Texas. I wanna visit Ian and his castle. I wanna know the history of the castle, I want to know Ian's plans for the castle, and hopefully at the very end of it, we can sit down and I can give Ian any advice that I can after owning an abandoned town for the past five years. So that's the plan. Let's pack up, head to Texas, and go see an abandoned castle that's been sitting there for nearly 100 years. And so, the day of, you know, made my way over to Las Vegas, got to go through Death Valley, got on a flight, touched down into Austin, took the little trip out of Bastrop, woke up in the morning, and I was just stoked. All right, so we made it out of Texas, and right now I'm at my friend Ryan's bookstore just outside of Austin. And Austin is about two and a half, three hours from this castle. And I've been doing a little bit of research this morning trying to figure out the history of this thing. In about 1891, a guy named John Christensen moved to the United States. And he moved here from Denmark, and he originally settled in Galveston, which is just south of where this castle is. And over the years, he had all sorts of different businesses, you know, ranging from a bicycle business to a hotel and all these different things. And then in 1930, he met a woman named Niseka Vogel, and they ended up getting married. And they started building this castle. And for shortly thereafter, uh, John Christensen died about 1934. Niseka continued building this castle in hopes that one day the Catholic Church would want to use it to house their nuns. Uh, apparently the Catholic Church did not want this castle, so she decided to make it her primary residence. She eventually died. It passed to two different owners over the years. They put in a pool. One of them converted into an apartment complex at some point. All sorts of different things. You know, there's even a rumor that a person had this castle disassembled in Europe, brought to Texas and reassembled piece by piece, which to me doesn't sound uh, very true, but who knows? You know, stranger things have happened. So we're gonna pack up, hit the road, and go check out this abandoned castle. All right, and like that, we are arriving at the castle. Quite the entrance. Oh man. It just felt like I was transported into a different time. You know, I didn't know if a knight was gonna come around the bend and challenge me to a joust, or if there was gonna be like a, a scribe that just comes out of the bushes and starts reading some entry poem into this beautiful castle. How's it going? <laughs> it's quite the project. This is different. It's beautiful. Mm. See the washerman. Yeah. It's good. good to meet you. Yeah, good. This is Dawson. No. Man, you got yourself quite a project here, huh? Yeah. It's going to take a long time. Yeah. However long it takes, yeah. we're going to do it. 
And so it was really cool to finally meet Ian. You know, unfortunately his wife Kristen couldn't be there that day, but as soon as I met him, I could just see that sense of pride and curiosity and wonderment and excitement and just a little bit of fear that comes with tackling a big project like this. You know, he was obviously excited to show it off. He was excited to learn the history. He was excited to have visitors there. But there is this, this feeling of being overwhelmed. You know, that resonated with a lot. Anything that we can restore, we're going to restore it. Right. It's, um, it's not just restoring, it's preserving. Mm -hmm. Making sure it's, you know, because these are the things that make it unique. Yeah. All of this were taken from other buildings. Yep. These pillars, the window arches, you can see they don't quite fit. Uh-huh. But somehow it works. Yeah. Man. So wait, these are all taken from different buildings? Yeah. So um, there's a train station that runs just behind here. Yeah. And then all the materials were brought up, probably from Galveston. Mm -hmm. um, and then repurposed here. So, so cool. There's rumors about which hotels, which buildings it came from, possibly some quite famous ones. Right. Um, so we'll find it all out. All right, let's go. Good bit of light here as well, if, if you need that. Sure, um, here we go. Eventually this will be some kind of guest suite. Okay. This area isn't, it's probably about as good as it gets, you know, as far as the structure goes, as yeah. far as the roof goes. Okay. Uh, Things like that. Yeah. So, um, there we go. Oh, chandelier is beautiful. Yeah, got a toilet there. It's, it's a bit of a disgrace, but hey. it works, it flushes. That's the important part. <laughs> and as Ian brought us into the castle, I kind of fully understood why he felt so overwhelmed. You know, the place inside needs a ton of work. The roof is leaking, the floorboards are rotting out. As he's opening up the walls, I imagine all of the supports are gonna be rotted out. And so just the full extent of what he had gotten into hit me probably within the first minute that we were there. I imagine there was more than one bidder. It was like a competitive place when people started bidding on the place. Yeah, I mean, nobody wanted to restore it. Right. It was, it was the magnitude of it. it. Even people that had done, had been in construction and restoration for a long time, yeah. wanted nothing to do with it. Sure. Um, they, they were those people that told us not to buy it. Everyone told us not to buy it really. Sure. So when you've got a vision, yeah, as you know, sure, it's there and it just grows and grows and grows. Common sense told us we should walk away from this, yeah. but you know, if we walked away, it wouldn't exist. So. Yeah. And so what Ian's doing down there is truly saving a castle. And so if he's able to pull it off, you know, if he is able to bring life back to this thing, it will be truly the reason that it has survived. I really love that. Water is the enemy of old buildings. Oh, wow. I mean, it's got to the point where I've named my buckets. I've got Elizabeth, William, I've got Charles. That was Charles, but it fell off. Yeah. And Harry's the ginger, obviously. So is there a lot of uh, a lot of leaking in the ceiling? Yeah, so this is the second to worst area. Right now it's just damage limitation. Right. Um, we know it needs replacing. But our main focus is just stop it from falling yeah. down. But if this was two years from now, it would have been too late. Right. Maybe even a year. If you take a look at our wallpaper, we pulled down the paneling. Oh yeah. That's original to the building when it was built in the 30s. Oh. So it's kind of crazy looking at that. It's a disaster, but then you've got something that kind of reminds you of why you're doing it. Right. It's that original, you know, it was put here when it was first built. The first aim is just get the structure right. As soon as we've got a structure, we can we can work on the roof. Yeah. It's the frustrating part of the moment. It needs a new roof, but the worst thing we can do right now is add a new roof. Right. Um, if the, the structure is not able to support it. For me, it was such like a unique problem to be tackling. You know, here at Cerro Gordo, it's a desert, so I have to battle against dryness. And so rot isn't something that I necessarily have to think too much about, but rot can just destroy buildings. And even has said at some point, he just feels nightmares when he hears rain because he knows that more moisture is gonna come into the castle, which means more damage, which means more expenses, and kind of where does it end, you know? Out here, got a Pepsi, Pepsi fridge. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Obviously it doesn't work, but you know, trying to get rid of that. Yeah. Oh, wow. And That's this, beautiful. Even though it was here when we bought it, yeah. we cut all this down and Whoa. we discovered this very unique yeah. kitchen. So again, it's something that's staying. 
Yeah. We're not going to get rid of anything that's, that makes it what it is. Yeah. Maybe we'll replace the, the cooker. <laughs> yeah. But that's about it, really. That's really cool. It's almost like, like a pizza oven or something. Yeah. So how big is the property in total? It sits on about four and a half acres. Wow. Which is kind of perfect. It's, yeah. it's big enough to do things with it. Right. But it's not too big to manage. My next project is going to be emptying this. All right. Do you know what this was originally? Um, a lot of rumors. It was, it was chicken coop. It was um, house parrots. House parrots? <laughs> things like that. <laughs> this is one of the things, unfortunately, that we might not be able to keep. Yeah. Um, it's very rotted inside as far as termites go, things like that. Yeah. So um, there's, there's quite a few things inside that we might be able to salvage. Mm -hmm. Perhaps we can just, if we do end up getting rid of this, keep a brick and have a little area here. Yeah. So as Gina was showing us around, you know, the extent of the work that needed to be done was becoming more and more evident, but also the extent of people that had just cared for the castle so much in the past. You know, as you looked around occasionally, you would just see this crazy plaster work that definitely wasn't original, but was definitely somebody's pride and joy. Yeah. <laughs> I see that essentially the the plaster behind you, there's like a newspaper balled up. I, have you looked at that? So I wonder if there's a date on it. Because that might give you a little indication of when they put up that plaster. That's, that's very good thinking. I love finding newspapers because they always kind of give little clues. Awesome. So glad you said that. So January the 12th, 1978. <laughs> so, now you know. Yeah. Now you know when they put it up. That's awesome. <laughs> and so whoever was doing this plaster work obviously had a sense of humor too. Because he had mentioned that a few days prior he was opening up one of the walls and inside the wall there was not just a doll, there was a clown doll. And it was not just a clown doll, but the clown doll made music. I was too scared to take it out. One of the things that I love most about Cerro Gordo is just finding these pieces of the past, especially pieces of the past that humanize history. Ian, I think you should make a shirt with that clown music box on it. Uh, it was just the coolest and creepiest thing, but definitely made me laugh and gave me a sense of who might have owned this place beforehand. We got a trophy room over here? Yeah, it's, it's for a <laughs> fixer upper of a year. Out back, there was this room that was probably my favorite that was behind all this collapse. I remember we went up to the door and Ian was like, well, you gotta be careful in there, you know, don't get hurt. This is the building that, um, in that reel that I showed you. There we go. It was added on uh, by the previous owner. It's probably 30, 40 years old. Yeah. And, and you see that the roof has collapsed there. Yeah, maybe I just yeah, in. Uh, have, a, have a look. Mm -hmm. Cross your fingers. Oh, I've, I've been in some sketchy places in my day. This mosaic is pretty nice over here. I love that. Yeah, we've got pretty cool floors. Um, Very cool floors. Obviously this area needs to be demolished, but I will keep the floors. Yeah. This is the bit that might kill you, but there's a very interesting room inside of here. I've been in some dangerous mines in my day. If you don't mind, I don't mind. Oh wow, that is so cool. That would be amazing <laughs> fixed up. Wow, look at this roof. Whoa. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> <laughs> but after you get past this collapse, there's just this beautiful room that's enclosed in concrete and people have just added these beautifully colored panes of glass all through the walls. And more than anything, I hope that Ian can save that room. I just thought it was so striking and obviously it had taken somebody so much time and creativity to create it. That's such a unique room that I can't wait to see what they do with it. No one knows why it was built. It just, no one knows quite when it was built either. We've done so much research and there's so much contradictions. Yeah. So that's my wife's speciality. She's into the history of it and, uh, yeah. and things like that. I, heard, I read somewhere that the castle was disassembled and reassembled here. You oh, you heard that rumor? I mean, part of it, part of it is, yeah. you know, part of it was, and you can kind of see the bits that don't quite match. Uh -huh. um, 
these, these little details at the top, things like that. A lot of this would have been taken from Galveston. Um, the, the people that built it, they, um, they had a lot of connections in Galveston. Yeah. They owned a hotel there. Yeah. There's this concept called like the materials passport, and it's like where each of the materials came from. So it'd be cool to put together like a materials passport of this, you know, to best the ability. Everywhere you look, there's something. There's details. Yeah. There's, you know, there's, there's this. You know, right. All of this would have taken time and oh, yeah. effort and it's everywhere. Yeah. Um, it's very hard to find just brick. <laughs> oh, I there's, al there's always something. So. Oh, it's beautiful. So one thing that I bring with me pretty much anywhere I go, whether it's exploring a castle or going on a hike or working around the town, is Element. Element is electrolytes, and this is pretty much my safety net against getting dehydrated up here. You know, when I first moved up here, I used to get those dehydration headaches, and after using Element for the past year or so, they're pretty much non-existent. You know, this stuff is easy to use. You can see it, the pack right here. All that's in there is electrolytes, so there's sodium, potassium, magnesium, no added sugars or anything like that. And it's been a huge help for me. It's been a huge help for the volunteers up here. It's been a huge help for anybody really visiting the town that might be exerting themselves a little bit more. And now that's getting a little bit colder, they've even released this chocolate medley pack, which I think is pretty cool. It's really easy in the morning to throw one of these into your coffee or hot chocolate. It tastes great. You know, it's pretty much guaranteed that you're not gonna be dehydrated that day. They've been a huge supporter of the town. So if you're out there, you're interested in trying out Element, you know, if you wanna protect yourself against getting dehydrated, go to drinkelement.com slash Brent. So drinklmnt.com slash Brent, and they're giving an eight sample pack with any purchase. So purchase anything on there, they're gonna give you eight different flavors for free to try out. I love this stuff. They've been a huge supporter of the town. So I hope you check them out. <laughs> yeah. He's everyone's favorite. Do you know how many statues there are on the property? Or? Um, that's a good question. Probably about 20. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And it, again, it's one of those things where we keep discovering new ones around here. Yeah. This area. Um, so I'll show you on the other side. Yeah. Just like it's all this, it's repurposed. Yeah. Here. Oh, yeah. That's my crawl space. Yeah, it's, it's, Get yeah it's, it's good fun, you know. People want some quiet time. <laughs> <laughs> Jump on down there. Yeah. Wow. Things like this. It's so intricate. It must have taken so much time. Yeah. Yeah. Why well, is the archway? Downstairs, there was just all these different cool things. You know, there's the fireplace with a plaster around it. There's this bathroom with these crazy antique purple tiles all around this tub in this beautiful room. Whoa, look at this tub. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. And I don't want to keep that. I want to, as soon as it's restored, be the first person to open Yeah, that's it. nice. Feels very like. Elvis E or something. So the foundation's pretty bad here. Um, mm -hmm. It probably shouldn't have been a bathroom yeah. in this area. Right. <laughs> so it's a big no, bathroom. Yeah, there's, there's, there's no, no waterproofing, so you can see it's all over the place as far as you don't even need to walk on that. So, yeah. uh, do you think you'll have people stay here or like a museum or yeah. all the above? Or? That small section that we were in, yeah. um, where the fireplace is, yeah. um, that area, we'd like to dedicate that to the history of the place. Cool. Um, inside, yeah, hotel, Airbnb, things like that. Yeah. Um, that's the primary thing for now. Right. So between here and there, do you have any idea of how much it'll cost or is that kind of still up in the air? Um, we've had estimates between 1 million to 3 million. Yeah. If we'd have bought this maybe a year from now, Yeah. I, I don't think it would have lasted. There's so many areas which are very close to just collapsing. Yeah. But the first month we wanted to sell it a thousand times, but now we've fallen in love with it yeah. again a thousand times. It's a very easy place to be obsessed with. Oh, yeah. You know, this castle is gonna need millions of dollars of work. And it just felt very overwhelming being there as a visitor. So I could only feel 
for what Ian must feel every single day being there, working on it day in and day out. And this is the area which at any time this could collapse. Uh -huh. um, so we're just doing what we can as far as, as far as the water. Yeah. It's kind of a bit scary when those buckets fill up. So it's rained a lot the last few days too, hasn't it? it exactly, yeah. yeah. It's been pretty pretty bad, as bad as it's ever gotten. Every time we go in, there's, there's a new bit of wood to collect. All this is gonna go, of course. Yeah. Oh, that's a beautiful staircase. Somehow this has just survived. survived. It still looks beautiful. It's so intricate. Um, and again, we've got more lions. Yeah. <laughs> wow. The stairs will go, but this, of course, is going to remain. It's going to be the pride of oh, the entire yeah. place. I mean, the, with the light through here and these doors, it's beautiful. Whoa. I mean, if something survived all of what it has, yeah, it, it deserves to stick around. <laughs> so I like yeah. that mentality. So the whole time while here with Ian was fun. You know, it was that sense of discovery they still had where he didn't even fully understand what he had purchased. You know, there was a shed on his property that he said he hadn't been into yet. So I'm excited for him over the coming weeks just to continue to uncover these clues. Projects like this, your first vision is never gonna nail it. It's one of these things that as Ian spends time there, you know, as he gets a sense of the traffic flow, how the light looks through the windows at different times of days, your imagination is going to change and you just fully understand what that place needs. And we're really excited to see that development for them. Oh, wow. So um, a few years ago, it was turned into apartments. Yeah. Um, so this layout is not part of the, the original. Oh, these, these walls? Yes. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's it. So oh, looks great. One of the first things we're going to do is just really open everything out. Yeah. And that's why we've got so many kitchens. Yeah. All oh, right, because the apartment layout. Yeah, exactly. All right, and then we've got this area. So that um, that hole that you saw in the oh, in the, it, it's coming from where it starts. Right. Um, I used to have a couple of buckets there, uh -huh. and I'd use this pole to get them when they got full. <laughs> um, yeah. But um, then, well, my foot kind of went through. So. Oof. Um, that's scary. Yeah, it, it was a little bit. So, um, my, my wife has banned me from this area. <laughs> <laughs> Understandably. Like I said, this is the worst part of the entire castle, is this um, oh, right yeah. here. So, um, that blue pipe, we have stopped the water from pooling because as you can see, it's not rained, yeah. but it's still dripping. Yeah. It used to be a lot worse than that. Um, oh man. It would just pool up there and even when it was sunny, yeah. It would be wet. So now at least it only drips when it's raining. So. Yeah. Have you tried to put anything on the roof to stop it from leaking? Is that where the pipe's from? Or? So we've tried that, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, we've, we've done what we can. Yeah, and totally. we, we kind of just need to leave it alone now because we could end up making it worse. Yeah. So. You see that Chip and Joanna had a, um, have a castle show. They, mm. they bought a castle in Waco. Oh, did they? And they were like, this is the hardest challenge we've ever done. And I'm like, you need to come, come here. Yeah, come, come check this out. <laughs> I know. Right now I'm just filming my first YouTube video, you know, the first, the whole story of it. Yeah. It's almost done. What's the channel going to be called? Yeah, right now it's just going to be like Safer Castle mm -hmm. or Santa Fe Castle. Keep it like that, Frankie. Keep it simple. Yeah, yeah. Um, Easy to remember. Because that is the first thing. It, it is Safer Castle. It's right. saving it. It's stopping it from, yeah. like I say, falling down. Like the, the, the thing that's, um, taken off at the moment is, is a Facebook group. Cool. Um, yeah. Like it got to 40,000 people in six weeks. It's crazy. And, and all I did was I went on a gardening group. Yeah. Like quite asking them advice on yeah. cutting the lawn and like what, what sort of lawnmower should I get? Yeah. Next thing I know it's I wake up and there's 2,000 people on, on them and I'm like, wait a minute. Buying this castle was insane. You know? <laughs> like as somebody who owns a ghost town, this is like a crazy project, but people are drawn to that type of stuff, you know, because a lot of them have that desire in the back of their head to do something like that. And to see somebody actually doing it, that's amazing. And to understand like, you're a very relatable person, you know, it's, it's like, you're not a billionaire real estate developer that's like, you know, no offense against them, but you're, 
it's not Chip and Joanna Gaines redoing this because we all know that Chip and, you know, they're, they have infinite resources almost, right? Mm -hmm. And so like figuring out a way to preserve this place as like just another guy, you know, <laughs> is like really, I think, appealing and interesting and like inspiring too. This area is where we do one at a time. Okay, I'll wait for you. <laughs> Let me know when, the, when to go. Okay. All right. And then we'll go up into the turret right here. I think it would be wise if we just had one or two people okay. up here at yep. the same time. Yep. Because <laughs> the rebars underneath all of this are uh, oh, nice. a bit rusty. Okay, this is how you defend the fort. Sit up here and shoot arrows at people. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and as you get to the very top, there's even the lookout tower, which to me just sparks so many different imaginations of what you could do with your own lookout tower. You know, I know Ian wants to put in a moat, which I think is hilarious and great. Maybe even make it into a lazy river would be my suggestion, but I'll hold that back. I'll let Ian do what he feels uh, is right. <laughs> That'll go up in Cerro Gordo. I'll send you a photo of it in Cerro Gordo. All right, so I've been back now for a couple days and I've had a lot of time to think about the castle, think about Ian, think about Kristen, and just think about this adventure that they're on. You know, this is one of those projects that will change you. And that's just what these big projects do. You know, they change you, they force you to adapt and become almost a completely new person, you know? And so they're gonna have those moments, where they're gonna have to prove to themselves what they're made of. Because right now they're sitting in a castle that's rotting from literal floor to ceiling. They don't have the money to do all the renovations. They don't know where the money's going to come from. And that's scary. You know, I resonate with that deeply. So all that to say, I'm excited to follow along on the journey. I also do want to put out a little bit of a disclaimer. I know that Ian said that part of the motivation to buy the castle was because of this channel. I have to say, uh, I cannot recommend putting your life savings into an abandoned piece of real estate. It is not a decision to take lightly. You know, this place has demanded everything from me. You know, I still work a day job every single day to pay for this. You know, I have loans, I have investors who put money into this place, all to try to just keep it going. You know, I know it's easy to look at videos and fantasize about what you could do with these abandoned places, but they're a ton of work. You know, it's probably 10 times more expensive, 10 times longer timeline, and 10 times more emotionally taxing than you can ever imagine. And that's not to scare you off. That's just to say, uh, don't tread into it lightly. And if you are considering some weird, crazy piece of real estate, uh, and you're gonna throw out my word of advice to maybe not put your life savings into it, hit me up. You know, I would love to help however I can. You know, this journey has been one where I have learned a lot about myself and what's needed to pull something like this off, and I'd love to help. And if you are out there and you're not considering some weird abandoned piece of real estate, I still hope you can find that project that just changes you, you know, that calls out the best within you, that big project that changes you as a person. Because it doesn't need to be an abandoned piece of real estate. It could be writing a book, it could be you know, learning a new instrument. It could be a variety of different things. But if you find that, you'll know it. And anytime you have those hardships, just keep going. And if you need more motivation, uh, check out Ian's channel. I hope that he continues going through all the ups and downs that he's gonna have. And I hope that you keep tuning in here too. Um, you know, this project is one that has a number of just ups and downs, and I'm gonna keep documenting them to the best of my ability. So I just wanna say thank you all so, so much for giving me this far. You know, again, community is what really makes these projects possible. Uh, I do hope that you check out Ian's stuff and keep sticking around here because the basement is done. I'm gonna get back to some adventuring. So we got some adventure videos coming up. We have some cabin videos coming up and a whole lot more. So stick around and see what happens here at Cerro Gordo over the coming years. <laughs>